So here's your quick tip. A lot of times we will do paintings and while we're in the midst of painting, we unconsciously will throw the painting out of tune, meaning that we will end up having some of the colors in one temperature of light and colors and, and other colors in another temperature of light. We won't be exactly happy with the painting, but we won't know why. Well, nine times out of ten, the reason is that the, color, the, te the painting is out of tune. So I want to show you how to retune a painting when the temperature is out of tune. This particular one I did about six years ago. Never been happy with it because the temperature is out of tune and uh, I sort of really didn't know why I wasn't happy with it. First kind of put it away somewhere and when I was looking for want something to use for this quick tip, I said, ah, there we go. There, There's my perfect thing. So what do we need in order to retune an old painting? Well, it doesn't have to be necessarily old, but it does need to be dry. This can apply to whether you're working in oil, acrylic, gouache, or watercolor. Now, with watercolor, you wouldn't use these same materials. With gouache, you would use uh, materials that are um, suitable for gouache, and with acrylic, you use materials that are suitable with acrylic, but the procedure uh, is going to be the same. So. I like the Winsor Newton liquid for doing, this is going to be a little glazing procedure I'm going to show you. I like the Winsor Newton liquid and have used it for many, many years. One thing about liquid, um, it, when it sits for a while, it gets to a thick gel. In order to make that gel liquid again, you need to give it a really, really good shake before you um, dispense it. Now, I've already put some in my little container here, so I will just put that aside. Here's the way it goes. First of all, this is a very dry surface, so because the surface is so dry, I want to slightly dampen it. I have in here a little mister that's 50% linseed oil, 50% mineral spirits. I use that to dampen my canvases just before I paint. And so I'm going to give that, give this a kind of a light spray to, just to give it a little bit of dampness, and then I'm going to wipe it down the same as I do when I'm beginning a painting. A, a dry canvas. I treat that same way, or if an area of a painting has already dried and I want to work back into it, I use that same procedure. So uh, the next thing then um, is to bring this thing into tune. So a large brush, a, a large, um, uh, almost any kind of brush, one that is not going to leave too many tracks behind. And so I will just dip my brush in my liquid, and right here I have the color I'm going to use. Now, here's the deal. Use a transparent color, fully transparent color. If you use a semi-opaque or an opaque color, it's going to leave little particles behind on the painting, and you don't need that. We need to feel that we we don't want the viewer to see that it's there. So I decided, okay, this need I, this is feels like in spot, some parts of it in a warm light, some parts are in a cool light. I've either got to take it all cool or all warm, and so I'm choosing to take it all warm. And for that, I'm going to use the Daniel Smith uh, Quinacridone Gold. It's, a, it's, it's fully transparent. Now, it's also very, very strong. So, how much to use? Not very much at all. You'll be surprised how little you need in order to make this work. And the other thing is, you don't have to have the same amount of Quinacridone Gold throughout. So, I might test it. Uh, that's probably a little too much because that makes it really, 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 really yellow. So I'll just thin that with a little bit more liquid, make it a little bit more out of the little container here, make it a little bit more um, transparent. In fact, what I might do is, and you can do this, wipe that away. And as I wipe it away, I begin to see what I really want, the warmth it needs to be. Ah, that's just about right. In fact, that too probably can be thin. So you see, in order to change the total temperature, you don't need very much. Um, of, of, of a warming or a cooling color. In fact, there's very, very little, but it, what it does, it, it emulates sunlight, uh, the warm color of sunlight. And you can just, you can see it changing. You can see the temperature pulling together, or the harmony of the painting pulling together as I stroke it in. And all the relationships remain the same. All the colors continue to read the same. So, um, and, and if in any place I want it to be even warmer, 
Yeah, keep adjusting that. If any place I want it to be any warmer, I'll just add just a little bit more of that um, quinacridone gold into the color. Okay, and it does feel like it's coming into tune now. Now, the bottom part was already warm, <coughs> so I, I wouldn't need to, to do the glaze on the bottom part unless I really wanted to, but for the surface quality, to keep the surface quality of the painting even, um, which means I don't want shiny spots in, in one place and dull spots in, in the other, then it's a good idea to take that medium, whatever you're using, all the way down. The liquid is not the only medium that can be used for this. Whatever painting medium you would use for glazing, uh, you can use to tune your painting, uh, to retune your painting. So I might do just a little bit of enhancement right here. Get that one just a little bit more. And I think my painting's in tune. So there's your quick tip.